Hello and good morning to you all and a warm welcome to Wyndham College's first ever set of virtual open events. My name is Mrs Terry and I'll be your host for this morning's webinar. We hope that you enjoy all that we have to say and show you. Um, we have a very programmed this morning of speakers and short videos. So without further delay, um, let me hand over to Mr Browning, our head teacher, to welcome you more formally. Hello everyone, good morning and welcome virtually to Wyndham College. As Jane just said, this is our first set of virtual open mornings. Uh, you have the option to pose questions in the chat function and we have someone ready to answer them. We will also send out for you um, a frequently asked question sheet next week based on the questions that are asked. The session this morning is also being recorded, so next week will be uploaded to our website and YouTube channel if you wish to view it again. At the end of our session today, we will ask you to fill in a short feedback survey so that we can tweak and further improve these events as we move through the academic year. The videos that you'll see later, one is a, a video which gives you a bit of an insight into the college featuring some of the senior leaders. Um, the second video is made by Head Teachers Council this week and gives you a view of the college based on our, our students' experiences. Uh, many of you won't have visited the college before and whilst this morning you will get a flavour of what makes us such a, a unique and special place for um, our students, um, there are many, many videos on the YouTube page um, including a 12 minute full tour of the campus, which I enjoyed making enormously driving a little golf buggy. So do excuse my driving. So in normal times on our open events, which we have about six of throughout the year, we would welcome more than a thousand visitors for each one. Our students are always front and center because everything we do here is for our students. You'll hear from some today, um, and there are videos, as I said, on the website to get more uh, feedback from our students. My part of a normal open day is to deliver a short speech in our college chapel. And the chapel is both the center of our community, but it's also one of the few remaining buildings left over from the dark days of the Second World War, when the campus was used by the American military as a hospital. Indeed, the largest American military hospital outside of the United States during the Second World War. When the war finished, uh, the campus went through a number of different uses, and it was only in the early 1950s with a vision of the then head of the Norfolk County Council Education Committee, Sir Lincoln Ralph. He believed it was possible to establish a state boarding school accessible to all, with the highest possible academic standards that would be found in the independent sector, with a focus on holistic education, where what happens outside of the classroom is as important as what happens inside the classroom. So Lincoln wrote our motto, let wisdom flourish, floreat sapientia. And we still stay true to that today as we move into our 70th anniversary in 2021. Wyndham College is unique. We are the largest state boarding school in the country. Our heritage is unique. It is a wonderful, wonderful place. Our students come from a diverse range of backgrounds from East Anglia to across the entire country and world. We are leading member of the Boarding School Association and one of only two state boarding schools to be allowed membership of the HMC, the Headmasters and Headmistresses Conference, which represents the 20 top performing independent schools in Britain. We're a leading member of the Prince's Teaching Institute and only this year, six of our academic departments have been awarded the quality mark for their leadership and for the quality of their curriculum. We were one of the first schools in the country to be awarded the world-class schools accolade which we continue to hold. As a boarding school, the houses are the centre of our students' experience. And you'll hear more about Lincoln Hall, 
where our day students, day plus and day plus plus, and our boarders will go to study, to relax, to meet their friends and to eat. You'll hear more of that in a moment from Mrs Hockley. Our culture, as I said a moment ago, is based on that established back in 1951. To let wisdom flourish, for students to be proud of their achievements and being part of our community, for passion, for learning, for learning academic subjects, but also for new things outside of the classroom and to be positive. And at the moment in a difficult and challenging times we face as a nation and as a world, those core values of pride, passion and positivity have never been more important. As I said, we do have students join us from across the globe and diversity in all of its forms is celebrated at the heart of everything that we do. Academic success and support is also important. We are the highest performing school in Norfolk and our sixth form in East Anglia. We're in the top 10% of schools nationally. For me, Wyndham College is about family. This is my home. There are 439 members of staff that work at the college and for many of them, it's their home too. All of our students and our staff together help to create Wyndham College and the unique community that we have all come to love. I will see you all again at the end of the presentations, but thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Mr Browning. Our next welcome will be provided by Mrs Hockley. Um, Mrs Hockley is the assistant head teacher for our sixth form, and I will pass you over to her now for her presentation. Mrs Hockley, over to you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'd like to share with you this morning um, a short presentation, uh, which will hopefully give you much more of an idea of what we can offer you in our wonderful sixth form. So as you already heard from Mr. Browning, we're delighted to welcome you here this morning. Um, it's unfortunate that you're not able to be here in person, uh, you and your children, but hopefully what we can show you today will give you an idea of uh, what we can offer. So as Mr. Browning has already said, um, our core values of pride, passion, positivity underpin everything that we do here at the college. We are very well known for our high standards and for our fostering of independence. We encourage and help our students to develop that independence, which we know will set them in uh, good stead for future. We're very well known for our academic achievement. Obviously the summer 2020 results can't really be compared with our results of the previous two years due to the CAGS process. We were very, very confident in our CAGS calculation. We were really pleased when those were awarded to our students. But as you can see, over the last three years, our results have been consistently high, record breaking. And as Mr. Browning has already said, the best in East Anglia um, for all state schools. Our progress um, is something that we are incredibly proud of. Progress is a measure of how students perform at the end of their GCSEs compared to the end of their A-levels. And on average, in the last three years, our students have made a quarter, nearly a third, and over half a grade more progress with us than they would at similar establishments. Again, that makes us the highest performing sixth form in Norfolk uh, year after year. Every year of the college's history, our students have always made significantly positive progress. Um, the average grade that our students achieve is a B, um, which puts them in really good stead for university job offers and um, anything else they want to do in the future. Um, again, the results from summer 2020 are not yet verified by the DfE, um, is slightly above a B, a B plus uh, for last year. We're also really strong in our students attaining uh, good grades in facilitating subjects. Those are the more traditional subjects such as English, maths, geography that some universities prefer. Um, and a lot of our students do choose to take those subjects with us. We're really proud of our most recent boarding um, Ofsted inspection. 
The sentence you can see here on the screen is something that underpins everything that we do. And we were delighted that Ofsted understood that that's what we are all about, particularly in sixth form. Our most recent academic Ofsted, we were also rated outstanding. Again, something we are super proud of. So with us, um, students will study three A-levels. They can take an optional further maths as a fourth A-level, or they can take an EPQ, which is roughly worth half an A-level. That is an extended project qualification. Um, within that, they are taught to research, to evidence their research on a topic of their choice. And lots of universities like it because it shows that they, students can work independently um, and are driven and passionate about a particular subject. If students wish to study an EPQ, they don't need to decide that before they join us. Mrs Buckton, who's one of our deputy heads of sick form, will talk to the students about that in the first few weeks and they can make an informed choice there. So on average, we have 11 taught hours per fortnight for each subject, which means that the students have 22 independent study hours throughout the two weeks. Um, we encourage them to use that time to the full potential. They have plenty of opportunities of study spaces in and around um, Lincoln and the college campus, which I'll talk more about very shortly. For us, it's really important that they learn how to work independently. We do give them a lot of support throughout the two years they're with us. Um, we have PRs, which are our performance reviews, our reports, um, and our form tutors give them daily support. The form tutors tend to teach a subject that the students have chosen to take at A-level, so they can have the academic support as well as the, the mental health and wellbeing support from their form tutors every single day. Uh, we do formal exams at the end of year 12, but individual tests and less formal exams throughout the year. So we're constantly monitoring our students' progress. If we feel there's an issue with their progress, they're invited to speak to their teacher, the head of department, their form tutor, or a senior member of the sick form team who will help them to target what's going wrong and how to make it better. Because A-levels are difficult and we're very, very aware of that, even more so in the current climate. Because we focus just on A-levels, we feel that that prepares our students really well for university. And as I've already mentioned, it's all about independent learning. We teach them how to learn. We teach them how to study and how to find out how to work best for them. So there's myself and Mr. Smith in charge of the sick form. I tend to take um, more care of the academic side, Mr. Smith, the pastoral side. But we work very closely together and our roles do overlap. We also have uh, two deputy heads of sixth form who are in charge of progression while they're with us, uh, but also progression post A-levels. So Mr. Thresh, for example, will talk to them a lot about universities, job applications, uh, UCAS applications, etc. And our 20 tutors all teach A-levels in their own subjects. So as I said before, there's always plenty of people around for the students to ask for help. Our sixth form team, uh, we have two uh, attendance and welfare officers, um, and they are the first port of call, Mrs. Giddings and Mrs. Crawley, uh, for a student if they're having a bad day for whatever reason. If things get a little bit more serious, we have two members of staff with us who work in the wellbeing uh, centre, which is actually now based in the sixth form centre, um, and they are experts in their fields, uh, and they can give the students um, a quick 20 minute appointment or something much longer and more regular if necessary. As I said, we're aware that A-levels are really difficult. The jump from GCC to A-level is hard. We have high expectations of our students, but we support them every step of the way. Our day staff and boarding staff, we have roughly 40 members of staff at just dedicated to the sick form. Um, and our Lincoln Fellows are recent graduates from Oxford, Cambridge or Russell Group University. Uh, so they are people much closer to the students age than us. Um, and they are there to offer them academic support, help with their university applications, but also just someone else to chat to closer to their own age. And our GBAs are our graduate boarding assistants, who again are recent graduates from university. Uh, and sometimes they can help the students um, with the subject because they remember um, what it's like to study at A-level. We offer a lot of support um, post A-level. I'm very aware that your children at the moment are only in year 11, but some I know have definite plans for the future. Others have no idea and either way, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we support our Oxbridge veterinary and medicine students right from the start of year 12. Uh, we have a bespoke programme that we offer them, uh, both in-house and from external visitors. 
Uh, we also have a dedicated careers leader, Mr Wallace, and he can advise our students on university courses, but also on alternatives to universities, so paid apprenticeships, paid degrees um, and work experience and everything in between. Our Floriette programme, as Mr Browning already mentioned, is something that underpins everything that we do. The academic side of Window College is only half the story. In our Floriette programme, we have tutorials and lectures that are delivered to our year 12 and 13 uh, twice a fortnight. And within that, they can uh, discover things about careers, but also maybe opera or um, Latin or um, leadership and anything in between. We have subject specialists and our senior leadership team delivering um, lectures on these things because we want the students to open their minds, to be experienced, uh, just to find out a little bit more about life in general so that when they leave us, they are well-rounded, educated individuals. Over the last three years, we've had great success in terms of our number of students who've gone to Oxford or Cambridge or into medicine. Um, and as I said, we offer that support right from the beginning of year 12. However, we know that not uh, medicine and Oxbridge are not for everyone. So we make sure that we support the students for the best route for them. We also have had quite a lot of success with our students gaining um, high class apprenticeships. Um, a young man went to work for Rolls Royce and yes, he did get a company car. Um, students take gap years and um, last year, Obviously, there was a bit of a drop in that with the students not being able to travel, but they're still looking into overseas opportunities where they get to work abroad, uh, travel around. Um, and we, we've got a lot of contacts in terms of people that we know that we can help them uh, with that. And equally, if students want to go straight into an employment or even into the forces, uh, we can give them plenty of guidance. In terms of other opportunities, um, we have a whole school musical every two years and the sick form students tend to take main, major lead roles in that. We have a lot of visiting speakers who will come in to talk to the students about their particular careers or experiences. A lot of those events this year will be virtual, but nonetheless, um, really quite interesting people who come and talk to them. We have uh, different clubs and societies that are set up by the students. Um, in any year, they tend to change depending on what the students want to do. So we have the debating society, the maths society, um, a couple of years ago, we had the Ultimate Frisbee Club. If there's a society that your student or child wants to run, uh, they can set it up for themselves. Um, and that way we know that we're offering them all the choice um, and that it's something that they're desperately interested in. We also at the college have the CCF, the Combined Cadet Forces, um, and that runs through all the years. But again, the sick formers tend to take a lead role in that. They're super proud to wear their uniforms in and around Lincoln House, uh, which is a lovely sight to see. We're also very popular for sports. Um, most of our sixth form sports teams play against the in, uh, independent schools on a Saturday um, and they do very well with that. Uh, we do things like geography field trips, there's jazz band, concert band, lots of uh, different opportunities for musicians and you don't have to take music A-level to be involved in all of those. We also run the Gold DOV, um, and as I mentioned before, our debating society did get the opportunity quite recently to um, go and debate um, abroad for the MEP. We have geography field trips, uh, French and Spanish exchanges, but we also had a rugby trip to South Africa, um, and we have a uh, individual students who want to go and do some work experience in schools. So they might do that just down the road in Morley or another student a couple of years ago, for example, went to Malawi to do uh, some work experience in a school over there. So any different um, things that they have of interest that they wish to pursue, we can support them with that. So if you're considering boarding in the sixth form, uh, few reasons my, why you might want to choose that. This uh, picture here is of our Ralph's building. This is a dedicated boarding space just for our sixth form. Mr. Smith, who is our head of house and so is in charge of boarding in Lincoln, would say that for parents, and he is a parent of a teenager, uh, the three reasons that he would sell boarding for is that you don't have to feed them, uh, you don't have to do their ironing, and you don't have to bring them to school. But obviously there are loads more benefits to boarding as well. For us, we see it as a major stepping stone to university. The physical buildings uh, look the same. The one on the left is our campus, the one on the right is UEA. Um, but also we teach them to be independent individuals. They have to do their own laundry. They have to motivate themselves to study. They need to keep their dorms tidy, etc. 
Um, within our sixth form centre, we have lots of common rooms and study spaces, our own bespoke computer suite and reading room, which is like a, a university library. And we have our snug, which is a, more of a social space. And the refectory is just for the use of our year 12s and year 13s, so they don't have to queue up with the year 7s. Um, and no Saturday lessons, which for those of you who are not used to coming to school on a Saturday, probably seems quite normal. For our Wyndham College students, they say it feels like a half term every week. We also, if you choose to board with us or be a day plus or day plus plus student, have a lot of use of social facilities. Uh, the day plus means that you're with us for all three meals a day um, and you're here with us for prep until up to nine o'clock at night. Uh, day plus plus is where the, uh, you have that facility, but also you have your own dorm. So you have uh, that space to use during the day for your study periods and during prep. Um, if you're interested in either of those, uh, you can, email or contact our admissions department or you can pop that in the Q&A uh, chat function on here. Um, you can see the picture behind me um, is the same as the one on the screen. Our college campus is a huge 83 acres. That actual physical space gives us so many opportunities and for so many of our students um, in the sixth form, particularly our boarders, they tend to go out for a run first thing in the morning around the fields, things like that. They've got so much space. We're set back slightly from the main school. You can see the sixth form centre is to the far left of that picture. Um, and it means that they are part of the main college. They have their lessons within the main school, but then they come back to Lincoln and Ralph's as their base. Um, and it does feel like it's their special area. They can also use everything else on the main campus, such as the AstroTurf swimming pool tennis courts. Our new Peter Route Centre um, is our maths uh, block, but it's also used for other subjects. Um, and we have lots of modern technology in there, interactive boards and things like that. Um, if you're looking to be a day student, we offer currently four uh, different college transport routes. Our routes each year are built around the students who request it. So we can't necessarily pick you up from your front door, but we will make sure that our pickup points are as convenient for you as possible. Um, once you are offered a sick form place, then you would uh, contact our college office to arrange the transport. So um, if you want to come here, or should I say, if your children would like to come here, you will need an average of a grade five across your best eight GCC subjects. And then each individual A-level subject has its own specific requirements. To find the details of that, you will need to look in our course booklet, which is on our website, as well as our prospectus. That gives you full details of all the different A-levels that we offer and of the GCC grades that you need to be able to take those courses. You also need a minimum of a four in English and in maths, because we feel that that is what is necessary to access the academic requirements and the rigour involved in A-level subjects. So hopefully some of what you'll see today will show us, uh, show you a little bit about our pride, passion and positivity that runs through everything that we do. The deadline for applications is uh, Saturday the 31st of October during half term. The application forms are on our website, um, but you can also contact our admissions department with any questions you may have. Um, I'm now gonna hand back to Mrs. Terry um, and she will take you through the rest of this morning. I hope it's useful for you um, and hopefully we'll get to see you face to face very soon. Many thanks. Thank you so much, Mrs. Hockley, that was fantastic. Now, so far you've heard about the college from its staff. Um, what we'd now like to do is give you a bit of a student perspective. So in that regard, let me introduce our head boy, Michael, um, and hand over to him for a few words. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Selgren, a head boy here at Wyndham College. And it is lovely to be speaking to all of you, although not in a way that I'm much used to through Zoom, having our virtual open day. I joined Wyndham College in year 12, a little over a year ago now, and I can safely say that I have enjoyed every minute of my time here. There are so many opportunities available to students. If you choose to come here, not only will you be getting a world-class education, but you will have access to all our excellent facilities and clubs. You'll be able to build on your own interests or even develop some new skills, which you might not know you had. What I found most striking when I started here was how easy it was to immerse myself into life at the college. It is a very welcoming place to be. There is a strong sense of community and everyone looks out for each other. 
I've had so many doors open to me, and I'm sure that through the college, you will find something that you love doing, be it sport, drama, or even singing. The large size of our campus means that we can accommodate excellent facilities to support your every ambition. In my experience, the members of staff here have been very supportive and they are always motivating you to achieve your best, both in lessons and outside of academia. Our teachers are very experienced and they will help you realize your capabilities and guide you along the way. This has very much been the case for myself. Quite a few times, I've been stretched outside of my comfort zone and that's where I've learned the most. They are also very dedicated teachers. Their support extends outside of the classroom. And this is just one aspect of what makes Wyndham College such an outstanding school. We also have members of staff whose job is solely dedicated to your future. That being higher education, apprenticeships, or going straight into employment. Whatever your aspirations are, or even if you're uncertain about what you want to do after sixth form, they will point you in the right direction, just as, as they have done for so many students previously. If you do choose to join us as a boarder, I can tell you firsthand that you'll absolutely love the fun of living at school. You get to have movie nights with your friends, do fitness activities after your work is done for the evening. While it may take a short adjustment period, you'll soon get used to living with your friends away from home. Someone once told me that boarding is like having a sleepover with your best friend every day. And I very much believe that statement is true. When I first joined as a boarder, I didn't know many people, but not long after that, I've become inseparable with some of the boarders. People who were once strangers are now some of my closest friends. The strong community feel that we have here really helps you to settle in and adjust to the new environment. Even as a day student, you will feel that same sense of belonging and you will have the same level of academic support that has helped so many previous students achieve their goals. As Mrs. Hockney mentioned, we have consistently got outstanding exam results. I have grown so much as a person in the last year that I've been here. When I go to university, I want to study biology, which is the study of everything that is living. Being at Wyndham College has prepared me well for this, not just from an academic perspective, but on the pastoral side as well. My experiences at the college have been very positive, and through these, I have learned so many new skills, which will be of great use to me later on in life. The decision of choosing new sixth form can be a challenging one, especially when you want the very best for yourself. But if you do choose to come to Wyndham College, you will have an experience that is nothing short of what is to be expected from a world-class school. Thank you. Super, thank you so much, Michael. At this stage, we want to show you a couple of videos of our college, really just to give you a bit more of a flavor of what's on offer. The second video um, that you'll see is actually produced just this week uh, by our Heads Teachers Council. Um, it's a great video, but just to warn you, you might just need to turn the sound up. I will get the videos now, so just bear with me for a moment. Unfortunately, those videos aren't going to show. So I think the best way is that we can send the links to the videos to you after the event um, to save the problem now. Um, and instead, what I will do is pass straight back to Mr. Browning, um, our head teacher, um, for his farewell comments. Thank you very much and sorry for the problem. Thank you, Jane. And um, once again, so sorry that those videos haven't played. This is the fourth uh, event that we have hosted today and um, they have worked perfectly every other time. Uh, so we'll make sure we get those links to you sent out uh, early next week so you can view them. And actually all of those videos are already uploaded to our YouTube channel, which you can access from the bar at the top of our website. Lots of information on our website, including application forms, of course. Uh, additional information can be found on our Facebook page um, and our Twitter feed as well. Thank you so much to everybody that's joined us today, our students and staff, and of course all our visitors. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to meet you in person for this event, but I do look forward, hopefully, to meeting you in the very near future. Thank you and bye-bye.
Thank you, Mr. Browning. Um, this does mark the end of our event. Um, I think with the, the video, there were some people that could see it, some people that couldn't. So apologies for that, but we will send the links out as we mentioned. Um, we're aware that there are still some Q and A's that need answering, and these will also be answered after the event for you. So all that leaves me to say is thank you very much again for your participation um, and a massive goodbye from all of us. Thank you very much and goodbye.